Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science and welcome to an update on the Cavendish experiment. I wanted to let you guys know what we've been doing and give you a quick tour of the shop. Before we get into it, a huge shout out to all the people who have contributed to this effort. And a special thanks to my good friend Lefty. Lefty sent me a picture the other day of the bottom part of the wire adjuster assembly. And the thing looks great. Lefty, you're doing a great job. I can't say too much about this. While Lefty's been doing that, I've been working on figuring out exactly how to build the enclosure itself. You know, when you think back to uh, what may have been going on 220 years ago, the craftsmen of that era would have treated a thing like this like it was a piece of furniture. And I would imagine they used probably the same kind of joinery technique that you would use if you were making a fine piece of furniture. So thinking about it like that, I decided that would probably be the best way to go about this. And I have figured out a system of dovetail joints, finger joints, uh, through tenon connections and things like that, that will make this a very dimensionally stable apparatus, which is what we really have to have. So feel free to pause the video, take a look at the drawing, if you like. And as with the other drawings, anyone that wants a copy of this, feel free to send me an email. Tell me if you want a PDF or you want an actual AutoCAD drawing, and I'll make that available. Now the wood's been in the shop for about two weeks, and it is at a moisture content of around 8.5% right now, which is pretty much ideal. So I think we're about ready to start cutting some wood. But before we do that, let me give you a quick tour of the shop itself. Since a number of you have asked about the shop, I thought it might be a good chance just to give you a quick look at it. My shop is half of a two car garage. So I don't have a tremendous amount of room. That's the garage door. Let's swing around to the back. And back here in the back, I've got storage for the wood. And you'll see a, a portable air compressor and a compound miter saw. I call those weapons of mass construction. That's stuff I use when I'm helping somebody work on a room addition or something like that. Not ever used really when I'm doing any woodworking in here. But I do have power tools and I do use them. Um, you can see a drill press that's sitting there in front of the window. As I pan to the left of the drill press, on the wall you'll see, it may be hard to recognize, but it's right in the center of the screen. That's a saw till and it's got a lot of hand saws in it. But two or three of them are really nice old uh, Dustin hand saws and I do use them from time to time. The main tool cabinet is hanging on the wall there in the center. And as I continue to pan around to the front again, you see a bandsaw. I do use the bandsaw from time to time, uh, particularly resawing wood if I've got some thick stock, eight quarter type, you know, two inch thick material. I may uh, use the bandsaw to cut that down to much thinner slabs, and it doesn't waste any wood to speak of. That curious looking thing with the white hat on it is not what you think it is. That is actually a dust collector. And it's important to have a dust collection system when you're running power tools because you generate a lot of dust. Actually, I've got a, uh, a sort of a two-stage arrangement. You can barely see it just to the left of the, of the workbench. There's a garbage can sitting up there, and that thing has got a cyclone-type lid in it, so it's like a pre-collector. And most of the dust, especially the heavier stuff, ends up in that, in that garbage can. Behind this uh, yellow gizmo here, which is a thickness planer, back against the garage door is a small table saw. I don't have room in here for a large full-size uh, cabinet type saw. So I just make do with that little portable uh, Bosch table saw. It does a great job. And then if we come back around this way, let's see if I can tilt this down slightly. I've got a couple of benches in here. This bench in the foreground 
is a bench I use really just for sharpening tools and I use it to store pipe clamps. You can see the pipe clamps down underneath. It's a good spot to keep those things. And you see diamond stones and stuff like that up there that are used for sharpening the plane blades and chisels. And the main workbench is in the center there now and sitting on top of it is the sapili that we're going to use to make cavendish. So it's sitting out here getting acclimated. Right now it's all sitting at about 8.5 to 9.5% moisture content. Really good moisture range for wood. So there's the tool cabinet opened up. That right hand door has mostly like marking gauges, uh, machinist squares, combination squares. There's an old fashioned brace at the, at the top up there and an old uh, hand crank type, we call them egg beater style drill. And down at the bottom are dovetail templates, winding sticks, that kind of stuff. In the center of the cabinet, most of that are hand planes, plus some specialty planes like a Stanley 45 that uh, is used to make grooves and beads and stuff like that. Uh, on the left hand side is another sawtill. That's the one that I, where I keep my tenon saws and dovetail saws. And I, I, I rotated one of them out so you can see how it works. That's a good way to save some space. So each of the saws just slips down in one of those scabbards and then it can fold back up into the cabinet. And on the left hand door is a uh, usual assortment of various sorts of hammers and mallets plus uh, cabinet scrapers and chisels. But that's pretty much it guys. That is the way the shop looks. And uh, very shortly we should be making some video of some of this activity actually taking place. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't make me come looking for you. Thanks for the support.